Charts enable us to identify trends, patterns and relationships in our data at a glance. However, they can also mislead us. In this video, we're going to look at plotting disparate data in line charts and how they can easily portray the wrong message. And we'll look at the options that you have available to ensure you don't mislead your audience when plotting this type of data. This line chart plots the trend of revenue and profit over time. It looks like revenue is growing faster than profit. After all, revenue shows a steady incline, whereas profit's quite flat. Presenting a chart like this is going to raise questions like, what's eating up all the revenue? Did our costs of goods sold increase or overheads increase? And the answer is neither. It's simply a case of relativity. A 10% increase on 2 million is always going to be a bigger number than a 10% increase on 200,000. And when you plot disparate data that continues to grow over time, even at the same rate, the gap's going to widen. If we set the vertical axis to use a log scale, which we can do by selecting the axis, control one to open the formatting pane, let me drag it over into site. And then under axis options, we can check the box for logarithmic scale. And we can see that revenue and profit are actually growing at similar rates. Using a log scale is one option to prevent line chart lies, but some people find these a bit confusing to interpret. So let's look at another chart. Now we can edit the series options to plot the profit on the secondary axis, select the line, control one, and then under series options, secondary axis. Now we also need axis titles to make it clear. So let's add those. And there's a load of faffing about while we type them in. And we don't need one for the dates. Now using a secondary axis in these instances is a popular choice. However, among data visualization gurus, they're discouraged because they're difficult to quickly see which axis is for which line. The other problem they pose is since they use different scales, they can result in an unclear message. In this chart, the lines for revenue and profit follow a similar upward trend, but we can't compare the actual growth rate of one against the other. The uneducated chart reader may even make the incorrect assumption that profit is performing better than revenue because the profit line ends at a higher point, irrespective of the scales. Now we humans make split second assumptions based on what we see, often without even realizing. We need to be mindful of this and try to present data in a way that's quick to interpret, but also consider any misinformation they might inadvertently convey. Now a compromise might be to add data labels to the end of these lines with the start and end dollar values of the revenue and profit percentage growth but it will start to get a bit cluttered. So let's look at some other options. Panel charts, which in their basic form are simply two separate charts, as I've got here, enable you to clearly see the growth in each series and the separate axis scales enable quicker interpretation than the secondary axis charts. However, there's still a large gap between the lines which makes it difficult to compare them. Again, this could also be aided by adding labels for percentage growth. Now this chart plots the change in revenue and profit values over time relative to the starting position in 2011. These values are known as index numbers, and I'll explain more on that in a moment. Now this chart tells a completely different story to the original line chart. Here we can clearly see that the growth rate of revenue and profit have followed a fairly similar pattern, and in 2022 it's almost the same. We calculate the index by saying that in 2011, our base period, both revenue and profit were 100 or 100%. And from there, we calculate the change for each year since 2011. So in cell D5, we can see that the index revenue is 114, which is the same as saying that the revenue in 2012 is 14% higher than it was in 2011. Likewise, the profit in 2012 is 7% less than it was in 2011. And each subsequent year is also compared to 2011 to come up with the index value for that year. The formula is simply B4 divided by B4, and we've absolute referenced the denominator, times by 100, and then we copy it down. So D5 contains B5 divided by B4, 
and so on. You can see here I've also added some labels that explicitly call out the values for the last year and the percentage it has increased over time. If we look in the formula bar, you can see this label is linked to cell J6. Likewise, for the profit, it's linked to cell J7, and those cells simply contain a text formula. We could also use these labels on some of the other charts. So there you have four different ways you can chart disparate data. Remember to be mindful that your charts aren't misleading your audience while ensuring they're still quick and easy to interpret. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.